AV in your ears. That amp was being giving you this audio visual down the most interesting street in the world. With my boy Steve, Fascination Street. You already know. Let's get it when you went for the Fascination Street. What do you so bye bye, Miss. Hi, this is Don McLean, and you are listening to Fascination Street Podcast. Yeah! AV in your ears. That amp was being giving you this audio visual down the most interesting street in the world. With my boy Steve, Fascination Street. Y'all already know. Let's get it when you went for the Fascination Street. What do you see? Welcome back, Streetwalkers. This episode is a return appearance from the great Don McLean. You know Don McLean from writing all those amazing songs, including American Pie, Vincent, Castles in the Air, Empty Chairs, you know, all the things. Since this is Don's second appearance on the show, we don't do the thing where we find out how he got from where he was to where he is. Instead, if you want to check that out, his first episode of Fascination Street Podcast came out August 30th, 2021. Go back and check that out because it is a blast. But in this episode, we talk about his newest children's book. It is written by Judith A. Proffer and illustrated by Yoko Matsuoka and is put out by Meteor 17 Books. It's a children's book, a second in a series of five, and this particular book is called Vincent, Starry Starry Night. We also talk in this episode about his 2024 album, American Boys, and why he thinks it may be his last studio album ever. We go all over the place in this one. We talk about the album. We talk about the books. We talk about a new Broadway musical that is forthcoming, which will be about his life and include a ton of his music. And Don lets me play the title track from his newest album, American Boys. So you're going to love that. Make sure you go to Don McLean's website, which is donmclean.com. Check out all of the tour dates. Keep up with what's coming out, when the new books are coming along. As I said, the current one is the second in a series of five. And you can also find out on donmclean.com when the Broadway play is coming. And this is my second conversation with legendary songwriter and American music icon, Don McLean. Prepare to be fascinated. Prepare to be fascinated. Prepare to be fascinated. Welcome back to Fascination Street Podcast. Don McLean, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing very well, thank you. Well, that is good to hear. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, streetwalkers, if you will, Don McLean was on the show a couple of years ago. So go back and check that one out. That's where we did the whole where did you come from, how did you get to where you are thing. But it, this time, we're going to talk about a couple of the newer things that have transpired since the last time Don was on the show. Don, the last time I talked to you, you had just come out with a children's book based on your hit song, Bye Bye Miss American Pie. I, I'm sure that's not the name of it, but that's what everybody knows it as. Close enough. Ah, close enough. Is it just called American Pie? Yeah. Okay. So why did you decide to do a children's book based on that song a couple of years ago? Well, we're going to do five children's books based on different songs of mine. American Pie, Vincent, Castles in the Air, And I Love You So, and Tapestry. And they'll each be of a similar sort. And they'll be written by Judy Proffer, who has benefited, I suppose, from listening to the songs and interviewing me. And also, I've worked with her husband on a documentary movie called The Day the Music Died, the story of Don McLean's American Pie, which can be seen on Paramount Plus or Amazon. And you can purchase it as well on Amazon. The book is illustrated by Yoko. Matsuoka. And already there's a gold little seal on these books, having won a Moonbeam Award, which apparently is the top award that they give to children's books. So this particular book, Vincent, which is the second in the series of five, is taken off like crazy. So we're very happy about that. So whose idea was it to turn these into children's books? Um, I know you said there's going to be five, and we're about to talk about uh, the second one. Whose idea was it in the first place? 
Spencer Proffer. His wife, Judy Proffer, has done other children's books. He did one for Graham Nash uh, using the song Our House. This is their thing, but I am an owner and a participant and the inspiration for these songs. So I get to be interviewed about them. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that those books are being put out by Meteor 17 Books. It's a children's book company. So the second one is called Vincent, uh, Starry Starry Night. How different from the song is the book? I know that the book is inspired by the song, but I don't really seem to remember a paper boy in the song. Well, the paper boy isn't in the song, Vincent. It's the Vincent character now, which is a whole new thing. But each of these will refer to the lyrics in a tangential way, not in a direct way. The song will influence the book entirely, but a whole other thing happens. And as I say, the illustrations by Yoko Matsuoka really are the icing on the cake because they're absolutely beautiful. It almost makes you want to put yourself into the mind of a seven-year-old or a six-year-old or a five-year-old looking at this book. And I think that's one of the things these books should accomplish that anybody of any age should be able to look at them and feel like a child. Do these books take place in any specific time period? Like, are these set in the 50s? Are they set in the 2020s? Are they set in a time period? That's a good question. No, they're timeless. Oh, nice. Now, there's three more coming after this new one, Vincent. Uh, are you going to do one a year? Is that how they're going? Or are they going to be a different schedule than that? Seems that way. Yeah. The next one will be Castles in the Air, and that will be the story of Donnie Boy discovering fame and fortune <laughs> and what goes along with success and the responsibilities of your job and so on, you know, for a child to learn about. The next one will be falling in love and relationships and so and so. The last one will be tapestry about the environment, the world that, that they live in. That one is going to be a little darker, of course, but not too dark because I think that in spite of the focus that we always have on all the things that we're worried about in the environment, that really it's just because the human race is on the planet that this stuff is happening. If you eliminate us, the world will function very well. This won't be in the book, but we are in the process of eliminating ourselves with the things we're doing, unfortunately. Sure. I think we've been doing that since since we first made fire. I think we started that. Are you doing any um, readings? Like I know authors, they'll do readings at bookstores, or you know, they'll do autograph signings or whatever. Are you doing those sorts of things with this book? Yes, on December sixteenth, I think we have planned a signing in Los Angeles, and also Universal Music is going to present me with a bunch of gold albums that they have decided uh, I was supposed to get. <laughs> so that should be a nice thing. As I've gotten older, all these old albums have gone gold now. And I've got so many gold records on the wall, and as well as gold and platinum albums from other artists who have performed my songs on those albums. So I'm going to have to get another house, I think, pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, if you're running out of the wall space, you can always send one to me. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that I, I need wall space. Yeah, you're welcome, buddy. I got your back. Do you happen to know off the top of your head where the Los Angeles signing is going to be on December 16th? Some kind of grove or something? Um, Garden Grove? Or... Oh, okay. I don't know. But gotcha. uh, I wish I did. I, I'm not properly informed to answer any specific questions like that. But if you look up the Don McLean website, you just look me up on YouTube. Just say Don McLean. You'll find, I'm sure it'll be mentioned there when the, as we get closer to the time. Okay, cool. So we'll just drive people to the website to check that out. Uh-huh. Now, I know this is a little bit off topic. Well, not if the topic is you, but you put out a new album since the last time we spoke. Yes, American Boys. Tell me why you decided to put out this album. Like, who's this album for? I know it's very specific in its writing. Well, this album is for whoever hears it and likes it. I put out albums because I feel like there's enough inspiration and material to warrant that. 
you know, I don't feel like I'm supposed to put out an album every year. That's for sure. And this album will probably be the last studio album that I make. I may do a live concert album this year or next year. That's a possibility, but that's pretty much the end of the road now we're coming to as far as my releasing songs on albums. You know, it doesn't preclude me from writing a song for a movie or doing this or that, but probably if you count all the records I've made of different kinds, there are probably 40 albums out there or more, and that's a lot of records. So I think we're about done with all that. Are you just tired of it, or are you running out of creative juices, or what, why do you think you're done putting out studio albums? I just don't really have anything else to say about anything. You know, I wrote Tapestry about the environment. I wrote Primetime about the world ahead, 19 in the 70s, about where we are right now. I've written so many songs about different things, Orphans of Wealth, The Graves, of course, American Pie, Superman's Ghost, you know, you name it. I just don't think that I have anything much more to add since I, I wouldn't be doing more songs about the environment or I just do one or two things and that's it. You know, I wrote The Grave and I wrote 1967 about war and specifically the war in Vietnam. And those stand as my anti-war songs. And I don't think I need anything else. So what was the inspiration for American Boys? And why is it boys plural? Who's the other American boy? Well, if you listen to the song, American Boys invented rock and roll. Oh. And they list some of the boys, Johnny Cash and Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley and Little Richard and Chuck Berry. And you should play the song on your podcast and people will know who, they're, who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Do you want to introduce it? You want me to? Yeah, like you're a radio DJ from back in the olden days. All right. Well, this is Don McLean, and this is from my brand new album, American Boys. It's the title song, and it's called American Boys.
So there's a few songs on the album. I've listened to it uh, earlier today, and uh-huh. I think my personal favorite, I think it's Truth and Fame. What is the story behind that song? Is it super personal in nature? Is it autobiographical? Every song of mine is autobiographical in some sense because I'm the only person who's writing the song, so I can only write from my biographical perspective. It's just a blues song, but it's a tough blues song, you know. It's not an easy blues song. It's it's a uh, there are hard hard lines in there. Life comes at you fast. That's the price of truth and fame. When I think I'm free at last, I find the trouble knows my name. So this is the basic groundwork for all the blues songs: trouble, and so this, that's what it's about. Now, again, I, I was listening to the album earlier today. Is there a specific, I guess, story behind each one of the songs? Like, there's a song, I can't remember the name of it, but it's almost like a spoken word poetry. Oh, yeah, that's called Vacant Luxury. Vacant Luxury. Tell me the story behind Vacant Luxury, because that's a captivating... It's a swinging little bebop thing, you know, with an upright bass. I did that once before on the Chain Lightning album. I did a song called It's a Beautiful Life on the Chain Light Lightning album, which had a number one record on it, with my version of Crying, and a lot of other good songs on that record, produced by Larry Butler back in the 70s. So I decided to do it again. The reason being, it just came to me, I just started writing this free-form poetry, is that it sums up really what we've been through with the pandemic. You know, whenever these things happen, either well, the pandemic never happened before in anybody's lifetime. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. But certainly in 2008, when the banks melt down, the Lehman Brothers went out of business, all these people that had all these boats and they would turn their dogs and horses loose and turn their boats loose and they'd be crashing up on the shore and they'd be walking away from their mortgages and their homes. So that was a phenomenon, and there was a lot of vacant luxury, believe me, and during the pandemic as well. So I began to go from there to talking about all the things that happened, you know, running away from the cities. You know, in the time of uh, Henry VIII, the wealthiest people were in the king's court. So those were the only people that mattered. They were the rich folks, you know, that controlled everything, and the king got all his wives from those families that were part of his court. And all they would do would go from one castle to the next to try to outrun the plague. So it was very similar to me that here was, we were doing this, you know, running from one place to the next to get away from the plague. So that started it. And then I began to just thinking about all this stuff where colleges were, the kids were paying to go to college and they really put to go to football games and mixers and, parties and stuff, and that was all shut down, so they were feeling like they hadn't gotten their money's worth. You know, college is vague. The rat race now is to outrun the plague. So you have to hear it, but you're very pleased with it, actually. Well, you should be very pleased with it. It really does evoke all kinds of pictures and thoughts while you're listening to it. It's, it's a very impressive song. Everybody go check that out. Again, it's called Vacant Luxury. Off the 2024 album, American Boys, Don, what are your plans for the album? I know you said this might be your last studio album. Are you going to tour it? Well, I pretty much stopped doing bus tours of the world now. I will go over for a few dates, maybe here and there around the world. I'm touring in the United States. You can look them up. I've got about six dates left to do. We're going to the Westbury Music Fair very soon, which I think is on the 22nd or 3rd of this month. And then, um, it's about four or five more gigs, and then we end up at the Hawaii Theater on December 20th in Hawaii. So I've been out there rambling around like I always do, but it hasn't been, you know, really balls-to-the-wall touring. It's been kind of easy, and I kind of like that. So there's that, and then the, then the company that 
put the American Boys album out and did such a beautiful job. They're a really great little company. They're Orchid Sony. They're a distribution company, and they put out lots of albums, and they're going to be releasing 17 of my albums in the next two years or so. Wow. So, yeah, on CD and vinyl. Mm -hmm. Are they remastered? Yes. And they sound unbelievable. Mike Seavers is my producer and works on all my video projects and audio projects. And he is brilliant at doing this. And in some cases, on some of the Christmas stuff, we've replaced the bass and put an upright bass and, you know, just made them better records. Wow. 17 albums. Uh Uh-huh. That's (laughs) That's <laughs> wow. Well, you better clear off some more wall space for some more gold, my friend. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> I make a racquetball court like Elvis has. <laughs> That'd be rad. Hey, streetwalkers! Here's a word from our sponsors. Karen Silkwood had a purpose. She was headed to a crucial meeting that would blow the whistle on the billion-dollar nuclear corporation she worked for. Instead, she died in a concrete culvert on a dark, desolate stretch of highway just outside of Crescent, Oklahoma. To discredit her, authorities and the institution Karen sought to expose called her nothing more than an emotionally disturbed and sexually promiscuous drug abuser. But in her death, she became a martyr for feminism, environmentalism, and pro-labor movements. From the creators of Gone Cold, Texas True Crime comes Silkwood, a story that remains one of the most explosive conspiracies in 20th century America and became the inspiration for a critically acclaimed movie. Silkwood dives deep into 28-year-old whistleblower Karen Silkwood, her relentless fight for truth, and the chilling events that followed. Betrayal, danger, and a mysterious unsolved death that still haunts the nation, five decades later. Seeking justice, Karen went up against a corporate Goliath and paid the ultimate price. With no known witnesses, what happened to Karen Silkwood on that cold November night? Was it an accident? Was she silenced for knowing too much? Or something far more sinister, In a world where profits are placed above safety, Silkwood takes you inside a gripping true tale of corporate greed, government cover-ups, and the deadly secrets inside a nuclear industry titan. Don't miss this eye-opening journey into one of the most powerful stories of our time. Find Silkwood on your favorite podcast platform and hit that subscribe button now. Some secrets are too dangerous to stay hidden. Let's get back into it. Who are you listening to these days? Are you listening to people you know? Are you discovering new artists? What's going on in Don's radio right now? Well, I have discovered a group called Tuba Skinny. They're actually street musicians from New Orleans. And there's a little girl named Erica Lewis. And they do, you know, blues, you know, 20s, something like Bessie Smith type stuff. But they're very knowledgeable. And they're just an easygoing group of musicians. Sometimes there's seven of them. Sometimes there's 10 of them. But there's always this lady, Erica Lewis. And I think they are absolutely brilliant. And their music, you know, makes me very happy to listen to. It's masterful. They, They are virtuosos. How they work these arrangements out, I don't know, but they are right there. They're as sharp as the Basie Band or, you know, any of the the old uh, orchestras. And they're sitting out there in the sun. You can see a lot of videos of them, tuba skinny. I highly recommend them. That's the best thing I have heard in years because they actually sing songs, you know. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there, men and women, who think that they are songwriters and they do not understand how to write a song, even a simple song. You know, and one of the things that the folk boom that we had in the United States from about 1958 to about 64 was that it gave us groups beyond that, like the Mamas and the Papas and 
different groups like that, but they also gave us Bob Dylan, who transformed songwriting and raised the bar, really. And he was using the English language, so his roots are in folk music and the use of English. And that's pretty much evaporated because there's so much illiteracy, of course, that's promoted by rap music, which is the ultimate illiterate music. It's not even music. I don't know what it is. But it's lowered the standards for what one would call a song so far that the old standards aren't even in view anymore. You know, melodies and rhymes and so on. So I'm fascinated watching this all go down. It's one of the reasons why I won't be making any more records because I just don't want to contribute anymore. Uh, I'm done with what I was supposed to do. And there's a lot there if you're interested in it. There is a ton there. What are you going to do with the rest of your time? You're, you're not going to be touring, maybe occasionally. You're you're not going to be putting out new records. I'm fairly busy with touring. Okay. So I've always got a job I'm looking forward to. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep singing. What I could do is now convert my time, if possible, into, say, visiting London or Sydney or Rome or wherever for a week or 10 days and sing a song or two you know, to pay the bills and do it like that, you know, really enjoy these places that I've grown to love, but I've usually been flying through them on a bus tour. So I'm going to do that. And I'm thinking about making one comprehensive live album. The wheels are going on that. And then there's a Broadway show that is in the works, which will use a lot of my songs and tell my story, you know, the same story. There's plenty to do. Wow. Even though you're kind of throttling back on the new music, it sounds like you're going to be busier than ever. Yeah, there's only, I, I like to be busy. You know, I like to uh, have goals that I meet, that I try to do. And golly, it's been a long, long road. You know, I started in 1964 when I quit school, I quit college. I went to Villanova University for about four months. And the only thing good that came out of it was that I got to know Jim Croce. And uh, he was a very popular man on campus there and graduated from Villanova. But I quit and went on the road, then went back to school and got a degree from Iona College in New Rochelle in finance and economics. And it's been very good to me, that degree, because the economic situation is something that is very, very important to people. And politicians try to disguise it in different ways. But... You know, when you go shopping now to the grocery store, everything's $200, you know, and uh, that's money to people who are struggling. And as we know, half the public is living paycheck to paycheck. We've not learned our lesson. We haven't learned how to be savers. We haven't learned how to invest intelligently. So we're heading for another big jackpot coming soon. Well, that's inspiring. (laughs) Yeah, well, I I like to tell you things you want to hear, but unfortunately, I have this truth serum that flows through my veins, which has gotten me in a lot of trouble, believe me. I bet it has. (laughs) Hey, I read somewhere that you had put up the original handwritten lyrics for Vincent for like $1.5 million. Is that true? No, $1 million. $1 million. Just $1 million. Just $1 million. Did they sell or are they still for sale? No, I think we got offers in the half a million range, but I turned them down. Sure. All right. Cool. Are you going to sell any of your other original songs, the lyrics? No. If I get the money I want for those, I will sell those, but that's it. I've got hundreds of song lyrics written down as I was creating the songs. And, you know, everything gets more valuable as you go forward. So, I mean, I can give my so-called papers to any number of institutions and, you know, get a tax write-off. Sure. So specifically the song, Vincent, where were you when you wrote this song? I was singing in the school system in the Berkshire County in Massachusetts, in the Berkshires. And I was staying in a beautiful old federal home, which is right there on the main street in Lenox, Massachusetts. The lady there used to rent out this gorgeous half of the house, the different people who were in the Berkshires, Yo-Yo Ma stayed there, I stayed there, other people stayed there. 
And I happen to be a lover of our antique furniture and Sedgwick house, some Sedgwick family, just a couple of rows up from some of the stores that sell Rockwell paintings and things like that. In that area, there's a whole lot of different artistic places. There's a dance places, and there used to be a place called the Music Inn, and I would play at the Potting Shed, which was a nightclub. It was a converted potting shed where they used to pot plants. By the time I was there, most people were just smoking pot there. They weren't potting <laughs> anything. Yeah, I used to work in that place with Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry. And I would open up to them, and I was an unknown. This was 65, 6, 7 in there. I was going to school at the same time, but I was doing these other jobs. Anyway, I was staying at this Sedgwick house in 1970 after the Tapestry album came out. I got this job. It was like for a thousand bucks or two thousand dollars a week, and I stayed for two weeks. And I would sing in the schools, auditoriums, and so on. And I was staying in this beautiful Sedgwick house, and I wrote the song there. Wow, that's a great story. I'm glad I asked. Don, everybody can get the book everywhere. Is that right, uh, Vincent? Starry, Starry Night. Yep, both that book and the first book, American Pie, a fable. Those two children's books are on Amazon. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and I think they're at donmclean.com. Is that right? Yes. I would say your local bookstore, but I think they've closed pretty much because nobody <laughs> reads. But children do read, or they get things read to them, so um, it's still viable there. Is there a place where people can get autographed copies of these books? Not at the moment, but if that occurs, you would find it really in the Don McLean website. Okay. Because I sign a lot of stuff for that. Sure. Well, Don, we're coming up to the end of our time here. Is there anything I didn't ask you or we didn't talk about that you specifically wanted to talk about today? No. I think you did a very good job of covering a lot of bases. I have a very long career with lots of things you could talk about, but I think we covered the essentials. Well, you do have a huge, long career. We could talk for Oh, I would say hours, but it's more like months and uh, probably still not even get to the good stuff. Well, the most amazing thing is how YouTube came along and the Internet and TikTok and all this stuff, because in the last eight years, my career has exploded. I mean, I'm much more successful now than I was before. I guess it's all these interviews that I do and the constant touring and the various projects that are out there. And so... My music and I get talked about, I suppose, in one way or the other more than ever before, and that ain't bad. Is that something that you maneuvered, or did it just happen? Well, after my very horrendous divorce in 2016, I decided to dig in and concentrate on working. So many, many things happened. I mean, you know, the song went into the Smithsonian. I got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I got a star on the Vegas Walk of Fame. I got a star on the Walk of Fame across from the Country Music Hall of Fame. I was inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame in Nashville, which is probably one of the highest honors I've ever had. And all sorts of other things happened, which were in the news all the time. And the movie, of course, was very successful and was reviewed by... All the major papers, whether it was the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, they just gave it raves. So that really also. And we had to live through a lot. First of all, the pandemic, which killed everything for two years. You know, I was going really good, selling out everywhere as I always have. You know, not major places, but big places, theaters, you know, 2,000 seats, 1,500, whatever. And a nice living. And all of a sudden it disappears for two years. So that's where I was lucky enough to run into Spencer Proffer and Kurt Webster. And we started uh, planning on these projects and we've come through with all of them. And the last one is going to be this Broadway show. It's, it was all planned during the pandemic. Oh, wow. Is Proffer involved in the Broadway show as well? Oh, yes. Cool. Oh, yeah. He, he does a lot of things. Well, that is exciting. Maybe when the Broadway show is coming out, we can have you back on to talk about that. Or, hey, you can come on every time one of these books comes out. <laughs> I love talking to you. You're the best. Well, I'm sure we'll reach out to you, so don't worry. 
<laughs> well, if not, I will reach out to them for sure. Don McLean, thank you so much for taking the time to come back and talk a little bit more about your children's books and your 2024 album, American Boys, which may be your final studio album. But everybody go get that album and also go get Vincent Star Story Night, the children's book. Don, thank you so much for taking the time and I hope you have a great rest of your week, man. Thank you very much for having me. It's a hundred percent my pleasure. And maybe I will talk to you again in the near future. Well, I bet you do. <laughs> I bet I do. Thanks, Don. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Opening music is the song FSP Theme, written, performed, and provided by Ambush Vin. Closing music is from the song Say My Name off the 2021 album Underdog Anthems, used with permission from Jax Hollow. If you like the show, tell a friend, subscribe, and rate and review the show on iTunes and wherever else you download podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All the episodes are available there as well. Check me out on Vero at Fascination Street Pod and TikTok at Fascination Street Pod. And again, thanks for listening. <laughs>